hope you're doing really well. What I want to do today is kind of follow up on the Race Around Rwanda series that you've all been so nice about. Thank you so much for watching and commenting and supporting me and Juliana and saying really nice things. Thank you. Um, so the last episode, the one where Juliana and I had to scratch from the race, it ended quite abruptly because, well, we had logistics to deal with and also emotionally, I mean, it wasn't the easiest time. We had to pull out of the race. We were very, very cold and um, I just didn't feel like talking to the camera or doing an update. So I figured that in this video, I would follow on from what happened at the end when I just basically pressed save on my Garmin and then the film ended and tell you what we did next. And then also um, kind of, deep dive into what I think worked and what didn't work on Race Around Rwanda, which was, of course, my first ultra. So there were many, many lessons learned. <coughs> so starting with the end of the last Race Around Rwanda episode, we were in the middle of a rainforest. We were freezing wet, freezing wet. We were freezing cold because we were so wet and because Juliana was really suffering with her knee pain, we weren't really able to ride and generate any body heat. So we were absolutely freezing and we decided to pull out of the race. We were, how far we were from the edge of the rainforest? We were halfway through at the visitor center. And I don't know if you remember, if you watched the video, uh, but we met a really nice guy before we went into the rainforest. Joseph here has given us his number in case we get stuck. So. We have, um, we have an emergency plan there. Juliana called him from the visitor center and he arranged for a car to come and collect us and drive us out of the rainforest and to um, an eco lodge that was just down the road. So that was just an absolute godsend. He's like a trail angel. So we waited around, we got in that car and drove down to this incredible eco lodge, um, just, such a cool place run by this really um interesting guy who is from the netherlands i think and when we got there some of the other racers were already there sitting around a fire we all had some beers we had a nice meal together sitting by the fire it all felt really good i was actually okay with scratching from the race i was having such a great adventure the following day we all shared a ride back to um to kigali to the capital of rwanda which is um, quite unlike the rest of the um the country that you've seen on my videos kigali is really progressive and developed um so we went back and we ate so many nice meals in nice restaurants it was great <laughs> So that's what happened with the race. Um, now I will move on to what worked for me, what didn't work for me. Uh, let me grab my notes. The fitness, the physical side of things, logistics and decision making, and um, equipment and looking into where I can improve on things next time. In terms of choosing partners, Juliana could not be surpassed. She is the best. We complimented each other entirely. Our pace would have been fine if she hadn't got injured. So I will definitely be racing with her again. It's all about the camaraderie and the fun for me, despite the challenges. And for that, we were the perfect fit. When it came to my body and my preparations, well, I, I could have trained harder, obviously, if I hadn't had COVID and stuff. So certainly I could have been um, faster and fitter. I'm curious as to how my body would have held up if Juliana hadn't been struggling. Like, could I have just ridden the whole thing without stopping all the time? I got a lot of recovery, thanks to Juliana. I wonder how I'd have felt if she hadn't been sick, hadn't been injured, and we'd have just kept riding, 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 riding. What I definitely could have improved on was um, my strength just generally. Um, so I got a lot of neck and shoulder pain and I've been to see my physio um, and she reckons that I need to do more strength training, some more gym training. Because essentially you need to be so strong and robust all over to support yourself. So, you know, you're sitting in that position all the time. You need to have strong neck and um, back and stuff to support yourself as you're riding along. So. I'm doing a lot more um, gym work now and stability stuff, stuff like that. 
but overall um considering how ill i was over the preceding three months i don't think i did that badly pacing wise i think we got it pretty spot on until the things started going wrong like sickness and knee pain um i think if we'd have kept going at that pace we'd have done quite all right and if we'd have stuck with our policy of sleeping a few hours at night and then getting up early and leaving early i think i think we would have been okay um circumstances obviously changed all that and then we did oversleep one day but by that point in the race it didn't really matter so much um so i have learned that it is possible to sleep on an ultra and um you shouldn't be put off trying one just because you think you won't be able to sleep at all sleep management is important and if you factor it into your pacing and schedule then um it, it's worth sleeping because it means you can perform better on the bike if you're trying to win well forget that but if you're not trying to win then you can do an ultra and get some sleep next thing i wanted to talk about if you're still listening is this really boring i'm sorry i'm interested in this kind of thing but i'm a bit geeky about stuff if it's boring turn it off i'm sorry so routing now i had the brew on my garmin 1040 solar which i should review and i will review soon uh, it worked really well flawlessly it didn't get lost which is amazing isn't it uh what i learned is it's quite useful to have ride the ride with gps route downloaded on your phone offline because i did like referring to that and seeing how much climbing was to come it was awkward on the Garmin to get the view right. You would zoom out and see an enormous bit of the route to come. And um, then if you change the view, it would be only the next 200 metres or something. I liked looking at Ride with GPS because you got a more accurate overview of the next section of the route. You could zoom in and out how you want on that. So I definitely go down that route again next time. I had a Google Maps document that one of the other races actually first created um, and I added to. I think you need to add potential hotel stops even in places where you don't think you're going to stop because you just don't know and it wastes so much time trying to find places to stay when you're racing. It's yeah it's a I was going to say a money pit, a time pit? So uh, this Google document thing with all the hotels on was really, really helpful. And I would definitely do that again. You can add um, these things on the Ride G with GPS app, but I just liked having this standalone dock hotels with the route overlaid. That was good. So before I went, I packed a bunch of Tailwind. That is um, like a nutrition powder, hydration powder, carbs powder. It's carbs powder. And you put that in your water bottle. It's quite sort of plain tasting. So it's kind of easy to drink and it can give you 50 or 60 grams of carbs an hour. It's good stuff. Uh, but I don't want to rely on that for all of my carb needs because if I can't get any water, then how am I going to get my carbs? So Tailwind is a useful addition, but you wouldn't want that to be your only fuel source on a race like this. Uh, I also took a bunch of cliff gels because um, they're really small and compact and you get a lot of carbs for a small, um, not very heavy package. And they were great. I would do that again. I mean, I probably took about 12 or 14 gels with me um, and they were really, really useful and they didn't take up much space, I would do that again. So Tailwind and Cliff Gels are coming with me next time. I know they work for me. Food on the road, well, it's tricky because you do have to just eat what you come across. So I looked for things that were really plain and ended up eating the same stuff most of the time. Bananas, plain biscuits, and then portable stuff like samosas and um, chapatis. We had a lot of those. Um, in fact, by the end of the trip, I couldn't eat chapatis anymore at all. Uh, but the biscuits were okay. Hello. A cat has joined us. Should I bring her? Oh, Fenris, come on. No, she's not up for it. I ended up having two stem bags, uh, two feed bags at the front, and that was great. Bunged a load of food in there and I could put a bottle of Coke in the other one sometimes. Uh, that was such uh, an easy way of having my snacks to hand, I would definitely go with that again, one on each side. Then I had a long top tube bag 
and that was really useful for stuff that I needed to access like power banks and chargers and GoPros and stuff. Up the back I had a small saddle bag. I mean the setup just worked, it was great. But the biggest revelation was the hydro vest. So I had this and uh, it had a 1.5 litre bladder in the back and I also had a 750 mil uh, bead on. That was ample water in Rwanda because you can get water in a lot of places. Well, not always, but generally you can get water. So that worked really well for me. But the best thing about the pack, aside from its water carrying capabilities, was that you could stuff your snacks and stuff in it. And if you had um, a gilet or arm warmers that you didn't want to wear anymore, you could just put them in the pack. It was just really useful. It's like another pocket. So I would always do a race like this with a hydration pack because it just, it's so handy for carrying the water and stashing all your stuff. Moving on to meds and hygiene and all that kind of thing. Well, you know that I suffered from such a bad saddle sore and I will never go and do a race like this again without some sort of numbing cream for the bum area. So I'm gonna to have to get hold of some of that before the next race. The other thing that I used all the time was Juliana's um it was like a vitamin d kind of um almost like vaseline -y stuff in a tiny pot and you put it around your nose i always get sore around my nose that was an absolute lifesaver so you can put that on your lips and nose and it just helps you out no end sunscreen i took like a kind of cream in a tube that was really annoying because when you're covered in filth you don't want to be rubbing that all over yourself so you end up just not putting it on next time i'll take a spray so i can just missed it all over my face and arms whenever I need to and not have to rub it in. I did end up having to take ibuprofen um, because of the pain I was in round my bum area. Um, <laughs> so I know it's not very good for you on an ultra but I, I would take that again just in case I have to use it. So I, I think all in all I kind of got, got it relatively right with that sort of thing. One thing I saw Juliana had done was she'd emptied out all her chamois cream into a Ziploc bag and she had lots of things in small Ziploc bags. It took up a lot less space in her top tube bag than all my stuff which was in its original packaging. So that's quite a good tip if you've got um, sturdy enough ones that aren't going to leak and squirt cream everywhere. <laughs> Clothes. So this was awesome i was wondering whether it's going to be annoying not having a jersey because um you haven't got jersey pockets but that wasn't an issue because i had the hydration pack on and i used those pockets so jersey pockets wouldn't have get you got used really anyway my other reservation about using this was you know when you're riding a climb and you zip and unzip your jersey well i thought that this might be a bit um not very versatile but actually it was great because it's just so 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 thin so when I was hot I didn't have a base layer and a jersey which is like an extra layer I just had this when it was really hot and when it was cooler I would just put on my gilet and you can zip and unzip your gilet so for me this yes this is very good it's from seven mesh I think it's just about just about recovered still a bit dirty around the neck this is great not so good well, there is a rule that you should never wear um, new equipment for an ultra or any kind of race. You should only ever use stuff that you've used, you've used loads of times because you don't know how it's going to fare. And let's just say that these beautiful looking seven mesh shorts didn't do my bum any favours. What a shame. They're so lovely and comfy up here around the top and the straps. Normally I have a problem with straps hurting my shoulders. These are wonderful, but I just don't think the pad was thick enough for an ultra. And the pockets are just a bit too small for putting your phone and stuff in. So they look really cool and I'll still wear them for shorter, shorter road rides, but they weren't great for the ultra. So lesson learned, don't take new kit. I just really wanted to wear them because they look so nice. The other pair of shorts that I took, the Mission Workshop ones, those worked really well. Um, by the time I got those on, my bum was already sore, so there wasn't much they could do to help that, but they were more comfortable and they had bigger pockets. So yes to the Mission Workshop shorts. I would always do an ultra with cargo bib shorts, but um, next time I wouldn't take a brand new pair that I've never worn before and I'd make sure that the pockets were large enough to hold stuff. 
Aside from that, I pretty much got my clothing spot on. I left the leg warmers in Kigali. I didn't take them on the race because I didn't think I'd need them and I didn't need them. Uh, one thing that would have been good, Juliana had this thing called a burner from Albion Cycling. It's like a small piece of um, insulated material, like synthetic down or something. And you just stuff it down your jersey or your jacket when you're about to descend or if you get a bit cold and it keeps the wind chill off you. That was a really cool bit of kit because it rolls down really, really tiny, but she was always pulling that thing on and off. She loved it and now I want one. Well, we're nearly there. Just a couple of other points. Uh, lights, make sure that you can charge your lights whilst you're going along. Turns out some lights have to be charged with a specific uh, power bank and we didn't know that. That was a bit of an issue, um, but we know that now. So just make sure that you know you can charge your lights as you go along if that's what you want to do. Speaking of power banks, I originally packed three, uh, then I left one in Kigali and I just took two. I mean, even that was probably unnecessary. One would have been fine. But then I guess what, what if something goes wrong with that one? They're really small, so maybe I'll take two. But three was overkill, didn't need that. And finally, onto the bike, TT bars. I got that right. They would have been pointless for me. There was just so much climbing and so much gravel descending. I just really wouldn't have used them very much. The first day, there was a lot of road. It was nice, actually. I mean, I like gravel, but it was nice. And the first day, I did think, oh, should I put them on? But after that, no, no way. They would have just added extra weight and not got used. So I made the right choice there. My WTB tyres with the uh, TCS were really, really good. Only reason I had an issue was because I got hit by a motorbike. I would use them again. Uh, they were just the perfect tyre for that trip and that kind of terrain. So yes to those. I was a bit anxious about my Axis battery running out. And so I took an extra charger and an extra battery. It was fine. So I don't think I need to have so much anxiety about that. I just make sure that I put new uh, coin batteries in the shifters and go with a fully charged battery next time. Um, or will I? See, anxiety always pops up at the last minute and you think you should take spares. And that's why you get so weighed down. I would not only take one pump if I was racing as a pair. That was stupid. Uh, Dyna plugs, I would take. That was amazing. Always like those, particularly the Dyna plug racer, which I didn't even realise. It's got not just a, a tyre repair plug on each end. Um, if you unscrew that end and flip it round, there's other ones inside. So that means you've got four already loaded up. And then I took a bunch of spares with me anyway. So I recommend that. <laughs> But yeah, that is it. That's the stuff that worked, the stuff that didn't, and what happened next. Um, if you've made it this far, well done you. Um, not sure what I'll be filming next. Maybe that Garmin 1040 solar review, um, some local rides, um, an update on what I'm doing next. I don't know. Let me know what you want to see. And thanks for watching. Bye.